the love that rescued me some deep in sin.
the light. He had horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove, and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 7. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction. And the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thy anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea? that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation. Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word, Salah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by the deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on her. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows, they went. And at the shining of thy glittery spear, thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Thou waitest forth for thy for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation, even for salvation with thine anointed. Verse 13 again. Thou waitest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Salah. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. 
rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will draw in the God of my salvation. Verse 19. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hands feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. 19 again. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hands feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. Amen. Grace and peace. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. 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 Troubled heart, why don't you see King the Lord, your Redeemer? Troubled heart. Troubled heart, why don't you seek him? Troubled heart, in this troubled world. Troubled heart, why don't you seek him? The Lord, your Redeemer. Troubled heart, in this troubled world. Troubled heart. Thank you. 
satisfies. Jesus satisfies. He will give you the living waters now. Heavenly waters, satisfying waters. He is willing to show you his love. He'll give you holy ghost, fire, supernatural power. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To be stable, not to panic, but take instructions. 
And before I bring the message tonight, I want to extend our heartfelt appreciation for those in the medical field, to the medical doctors, and to the nurses in particular, who are on the forefront of this pestilence called the coronavirus. Because they cannot say they are not going to work. They have to be on the job to administer the medicine for those who have contracted these diseases. So our prayers go out to all the medical doctors all over the world, all the health, those in the health field, we call them the first respondents because they are the one, the first point that we have to go and see. And we cough, some of us will cough in their faces. So our prayers go out to all medical doctors, to all nurses, and everyone that has something to do with the health departments all over the world. We are praying for you that the Lord will protect you. But I also want to encourage every one of you that this is the time to know the Lord Jesus Christ, to know him. It is important. This is the time. If you are a medical doctor, you don't know Jesus, surrender your life to him. If you are a nurse, whatever field you occupy in that area, in the health department, make sure that you know Jesus Christ because he alone is going to be your shield. And if something should happen, if you know Jesus Christ, heaven is where you are going to be. Hallelujah. And so that goes for all those in the health department. I have to do that. The title for tonight's message the time to know the Lord. The time to surrender your all to Him. Time to seek the Lord. They are all the same. Amen? Time to know the Lord. Time to seek the Lord. Time to run to the Lord. Time to seek Him. We are living in dangerous times. I have been preaching this all these years when we come here, that we are living in dangerous time. I have said that for God, only the only thing that God can use is weapons. He has a lot of weapons in his arsenal. Mosquito is one. And you and I cannot stand a mosquito. Hallelujah. Our hands are too short to box with the living God. The hands of humans are too short to box with the living God. And our brains are too tiny, too tiny to, to imagine anything against the living God. Hallelujah. Our hands are too short to fight against God. And our brains are too tiny to imagine any evil against God and let it succeed. Can you all hear me, city of Greensboro, county of Guilford, state of North Carolina, nation of America, and the world at large? Our hands are too short to box with the living God, and our brains are too tiny to imagine any wicked thing against God and let it materialize. Amen. And our mummies are like trash before God. We may count them in trillions and think we have all the money. But in the day when we face God, in, in, when we say we want to box or fight against God, we discover that our money cannot save us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So then, how do we save ourselves? We cannot save ourselves. The only one that we can run to for salvation is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. He's the only one that we can run to for salvation. Amen. The very person that we have been rejecting all this time 
is the one that we need in the days of crisis. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Our brother and our sister read two chapters. One from the book of Psalm and one from the book of Habakkuk. For there are Habakkuk, there are some of us who go to church and we call ourselves Christians. We don't know where. We've not ever heard the name Habakkuk before. Mercy. Maybe the only one we know is the book of Psalm. And even there are some who don't know. And yet we go to church. But this is the time to know the Lord. This is the time to devour the word of God. In the chapters that were read, or in the books that were read for us, there was one word that was common in both. That word, pestilence. You found pestilence in the book of Habakkuk. And you find pestilence in the book of Psalm. What is pestilence? And that's the question. What is a pestilence? What is a pestilence? A pestilence is a fatal epidemic disease. A pestilence is a fatal, that is a deadly epidemic disease. A pestilence. So we can classify the coronavirus that today we hear all over the world that is advancing and is plaguing nations and taking lives, we can classify that as an epidemic. It is an epidemic. An epidemic is one kind of disease that no human, no human is able to surmount, to surmount or to overpower the only one who can deliver us in the days of pestilence is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Pestilence. Beloved, the world is facing an in, not impending, it is already here. The World Health Organization has declared it a pandemic. A pandemic. Meaning that it is so serious that all the nations have to activate and declare a state of emergency. So schools are closing, businesses closing, nations have closed their borders, and on and on and on and on for fear of the unknown. An epidemic is one thing that your eye cannot see, and yet it is slowly wreaking havoc on the masses of the people. And that is what the coronavirus is. No human eye can see it. The only one who can see is, is Jehovah God. Amen. He's the only one whose eyes can see the coronavirus. My beloved, this is a serious matter. It is one that we can't toy with. An epidemic. This pestilence, this pestilence called coronavirus, no human eye can see. And yet the eyes of the living God can see it. He's the only one who can see it. And he's the only one who can save you and I and deliver us from this havoc. That is why I am saying tonight, by the spirit of the living God that you and I can do ourselves more good by running to Jesus Christ by seeking him this is not a time for party all the sports companies NBA, NFL all of them have suspended for fear of this pandemic Pestilence. I thought we were strong enough. I thought we were a people that nothing, nothing, there is nothing in this world that can make us run. But so you see the frailty of humans. Humans are very frail. That is why David said, Lord, teach us to number our days. So we shall apply 
our house to wisdom. In this day and time when we are swimming in sin, we love sin so much, we cannot stay away from sin a second. The world is engulfed in the scramble for sin. Once upon a time, there was a scramble for Africa, where those nations today, some of them call themselves superpower, whatever it is, scrambling for the country of Africa, splitting and splitting the nations of the world and dividing them and taking them to themselves. It is no more a scramble for nation, but it's a scramble for sin. We love sin so much, we swim in sin, we eat sin, we sleep in sin, we dance in sin, we play sin as a basketball, we play sin as a football, we play sin. Everything about us is sinful. And our sins have arisen into the presence of God. The only way of escape, my beloved, is through Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Beloved, this is not the time for us to debate whether it is whether Jesus Christ alone or whether whatever it is. It is Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ. Amen. It is only Him. Remember what Pastor Pimple has always been saying here under the unction of the Holy Spirit. The Lord from day one when he called my wife and I to cry aloud in the streets of Greensboro and give up county, he expressly told us, don't take offering. Don't take offering. Because the souls of the people are what is precious to me. That is what God said. Your souls are what is so precious and dear to him. And that is why he sent us into the streets and the byways, into the shelters, into the nursing homes, and into the hospitals of Greensboro and the adjoining cities. That we have not departed from. Hence, we see that on our crusades, whenever we have outdoor crusades here, we never take offerings. We never ask you for a penny. Why? Because it is not about your money. It is about your soul. And tonight, exactly, that's what the Lord wants me to share with all of us. There is a pestilence that has come. That pestilence has entered into the country called America already. Coronavirus needed no visa to enter here. It needed no visa. And it needs no permission from anybody to come upon him. But one thing is sure. That when you and I put our faith in the hands of Jesus Christ. There is a guarantee of life for you and I. Amen. City of Greensboro, County of Guilford, as we prepare so feverishly to protect our citizenry against this impending pestilence or this pestilence that is already here, let us remember that there is one person that we cannot leave out and his name is Jesus Christ. Let us make him our savior, our Lord, our deliverer. The Bible tells us the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. City of Greensboro. Jesus Christ went on the cross of Calvary and spilled his blood for this city. For you and I. He shed his blood for you and I to deliver us from the power of Satan. Amen. Jesus Christ died for our city, Greensboro. Jesus Christ died for our county, Guilford. Jesus Christ died for the state of North Carolina. Jesus Christ died for the nation of America. Jesus Christ died for the nations of the whole earth. His blood still avails much. And his blood is so saving. Those who run to him and cry for mercy. His mercies abound every day. And he's saving people. Would you yield your life to Jesus Christ tonight, my beloved? So many of us have started stacking up on food. Why is it that we are so much concerned about food and not about our soul? 
No, I don't want to tell you not to get food. Get fine. But the first priority, the first priority should be the eternal resting place of your soul. Because you can have a pile of a pile up of all the food in the world and die and go to hell. But tonight, Jesus Christ offers you a rope of escape. He wants to save your soul. City of Greensboro, Jesus Christ wants to be our savior. Gilford County, Jesus Christ wants to be our savior. Nation of America, State of North Carolina, Jesus Christ wants to be our savior. And the nations of the whole world, Jesus Christ wants to be our savior. Coronavirus is no match to the blood of Jesus. Coronavirus is no match to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Law. In the book of Psalm 91, the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And whoever dwells in Jesus Christ, there is a great benefit that the Word of God espouses here. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you and I put our hope and our trust in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, we will not panic in the face of any pestilence. Because we know that for us to live is Jesus Christ and to die is gain. And we also know that our God is well able to deliver us from all pestilences. Amen. Listen to what it says. I will say of the Lord, verse 2, everyone who has made the secret place of the Most High God his hiding place or resting place, this is their word of confession. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. City of Greensboro, citizens of Greensboro, citizens of County of Guilford County, citizens of the state of North Carolina, citizens of America. Where is your trust? Within the past few weeks, Wall Street, the stock market, has been going up and down, up and down, up and down. So now you know where the heart of people is, where the hearts of the people are, in the money. So the stock market keeps on going up and down, up and down. That tells you and I that when it comes to saying that we are going to fight God, we have no power over that. Because God can only cause the stock market to be coming down, down, down. So many of us would kill ourselves. That is why we have to be grateful to God that we are alive. The God who created the heavens and the earth, and the God who created new humans, who created us, who has established his moral code, who came and died for you and I, whose desire is that you and I will live in godly fear and godly reverence, that will surrender our all to him and walk in holiness. That God, whom you and I have rejected, we have expelled him from every public place and every private place. The God who formed, created everything, we humans, we think we are so powerful that with our tiny brains, we have expelled God from every public discourse. And we have turned the word of God upside down. When God made man a woman, and God said for this son, a man shall leave his father and mother and go and be joined to his wife, a woman, and be one. Humans say with our tiny brains, we say no, God is wrong. Man should marry man, woman should marry man. And the leaders legalize it. And they forbid anybody from speaking against it. And blacklist anybody who speaks against this abominable act and abominable lifestyle. Human with our tiny brains, tiny 
prayers. Our prayers are so tiny, and yet we seek to fight against God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We need to repent. We need to turn away from our wicked ways. There is a way that seemeth right unto man. The end thereof is the way of death. God who made man and woman and told them be fruitful and multiply. The human said no. I just want to use my body for pleasure. So when a baby is formed in your womb, you say that it's just a blood clot and you expel and expunge and kill the baby and you think it is your body. With our tiny brains, our brains that are so tiny, we think we've gone to Yale, Harvard, Princeton, and learn everything. And yet whatever you have learned is just like a drop, not even close to a drop. And with that, we define a human as a blood clot. And we kill babies by the numbers. And we've killed and killed and killed and killed and keep on killing and delighting ourselves in it, thinking that when we do that, God will be happy. My beloved, our brains are too tiny and our hands are too short to think that we can be on a war front with the living God. We can never win a battle with God. The only thing that you and I can do, and that's the wisest thing to do, is to surrender. To surrender to the living God. Surrender our lives to Him. He is a strong tower. He is the only one who can hide you and I. He is the one that you and I need in this difficult time. In these days of pestilence. In these days of pestilence, the one we need to run to is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He is our Savior. And He is the only one who can save you and I. Listen to what he said. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. God will cover you with his feathers when you run for shelter under his wings. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that fatal epidemic disease pestilence God is saying when you hide under him you will not be afraid when there is a terror by night you will not be afraid of the deadly pestilence that will come why? because he will cover you and I he will cover you and I he will cover you and I that is the word of God, and the word of God is sure. It is true. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, Amen. but it shall not come nigh thee. That is the word of God. Amen. This is not a figment of human imagination. Amen. It is God's word and it has been tested, it has been tried, and it has been proven to be true. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. City of Greensboro, County of Guilford, State of North Carolina, Nation of America, and the world at large. As we make this feverish preparation, seeking to protect ourselves from the impending pestilence called coronavirus, don't take Jesus Christ out of the equation. Amen. 
Don't leave Jesus Christ out. This is the moment when the city, the city and the county and the state will declare a national day or a national week of repentance. That is what needs to be done. A national week, a citywide week of repentance. I'm not talking about prayer breakfast. That lying, lying thing. Let's have prayer breakfast. Prayer lunch. We just love food more than anything else. Nothing we can do, nothing without food. Prayer should be prayer. And let food be food. If you want to have breakfast, have breakfast. Have break, 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 but don't make it prayer breakfast. This is too serious for us to declare prayer breakfast. This is a time for us to declare citywide, citywide fasting and prayer. Week of repentance. Where we shall weep between the porches with fasting and prayer, seeking the face of God for his intervention. City of Greensboro, County of Guilford, State of North Carolina, Nation of America, this is not the time to use a pestilence for politics. Because the coronavirus is no respecter of any political party. Hallelujah! National Week of Repentance. State of Greensboro National. Citywide Week of Repentance. County of Guilford. Countywide Week of Repentance. State of North Carolina. Statewide Week of Repentance. And the Nation of America. National Week of Repentance. And the whole world. Worldwide week of repentance. And that has been punctuated with fasting and prayer. And when I'm talking about fasting, I'm not talking about what you call Daniel fast. The Daniel fast that you talk when you'll be eating vegetables or eating those things and still say you're fasting. That's not what I'm talking about. We are talking about seriousness with God. The fasting that is without food or water. And when we call such a fast and cry unto God. As in the book of Habakkuk, where he cried unto God. And then he said, Though, though there be no vegetation, and everything becomes so dry, yet I know my Redeemer, he will deliver. Why? Because he waited upon the Lord. Let me close with the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3. He also made mention of the pestilence. Habakkuk chapter 3. And I'll go to the last few verses. Verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no head in the stars, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. My beloved city of Greensboro, this should be our music. Why? Because we declare a week of repentance. Why? Because we run to God with fear and reverence, crying unto Him for our deliverance. Then we can say, though everything seems to be devastated around us, yet we know that we shall rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will take my, make my feet like high feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. This is the word of God to our city of Greensboro tonight. God is calling us unto repentance. God is calling us unto repentance, my beloved. Whether this coronavirus was, was manufactured by a human being or it came out of an animal, whether it was manufactured from, by, in, a, in a lab, laboratory somewhere, and dispensed, it has already happened. It is in the air. It's become a pestilence. What you and I need to do is to run to Jesus Christ for salvation. 
This is not the time to play church. This is not the time to play church. This is not the time to play church. This is the time to be serious. Because if you should die today, you have to ask yourself, where am I going to spend eternity? It doesn't make any sense. If you should die of the coronavirus and then find yourself going to hell at the same time, that is a double jeopardy. No, we need to yield our lives to Jesus Christ. This is not the time, as I said, to begin to ask yourself which one is the true religion. Jesus Christ is not a religion. Jesus Christ is God incarnate. And Christianity is life, the way of life, the true way of life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. You have to allow him to come and live in your heart. Of all those people who go around talking about religion, 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 the only one of all is Jesus Christ who comes to live in our heart. All the others, they have to memorize it in their head. But Jesus Christ comes to live in our heart. And when he comes to live in your heart, he transforms you. He changes your life. The things that you used to do, you do them no more. If you are an alcoholic, you will not be drinking anymore. If you are a thief, you will stop stealing. If you are an adulterer, you quit from adultery. If you are a fornicator, you repent and turn from it. If you are a homosexual, a lesbian, you repent and turn from it. Any kind of thing that is contrary to the will of God, you seek to turn away from. That is what Jesus Christ does when he comes to live in our heart. It's not an ideology. Christianity is not an ideology. It is life, the true life. And all who yield their life to Jesus Christ, there is a very drastic change that comes into your life. The things that you used to love, you don't love them anymore. The things that you don't, you, you, you used to not like, that is going to church, reading the Bible, and all those things, now you begin to love when Jesus Christ comes to live in your heart. And tonight, I want to, I want to let you know, because you are wondering, how would I know this Jesus Christ? And the Lord wants me to tell you this. He is standing right by your side. He's not too far away from you. Jesus Christ is standing right by your side, wherever you are. You may even be drinking your wine, the alcoholic beverage, and maybe you become intoxicated. I want to let you know Jesus Christ is standing right by your side. He's whispering into your ears. He's knocking at the, your house door. And he's saying, my, my beloved, I love you. I died to set you free from this bondage. Would you surrender your life to me? City of Grace, brother, that's the question for us tonight. Will we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ? It is free of charge. We don't pay any money. I told you from, from, the, from, from the beginning, we don't take offering. So don't worry about your offering. That is yours. We don't, we don't need your offering. Your soul is what Jesus Christ needs tonight. He wants to set you and I free. He wants to shield and protect you from all harm and danger. He offers you all these benefits free of charge. Yes. Jesus Christ offers you all this free of charge. Free of charge. What more do you want? What more do you want? I was listening to them with all the programs that they have put together to help the people against this impending coronavirus. When I heard they said, the student loan, they are not going to, uh, they will take away the interest. I said, huh, interest. So what have we done? How about wiping out all the student loan? Yeah. But we will do that because we love money. Mm. Payroll tax, we are going to take that away. Why don't you make it permanent? No more payroll tax. So that they have the poor who struggle from week to week. They are paid and the money is gone even before it comes into their hand. That is what we talk about being something that is very drastic and meaningful. But humans, we love money more than anything. But thank God for Jesus Christ. He loved you so much that he gave his life. Jesus Christ gave his life. Jesus Christ gave his life. He died to set you and I free. 
And that is exactly what he wants to do. He wants to stand between you and the coronavirus. Jesus Christ is going to absorb all the coronavirus. If he was willing to die for you and I, he is more than willing to lay his life down for you and when in the face of this impending pestilence. Jesus Christ, he is willing to do that. Would you give your life to Jesus Christ tonight, city of Greensboro? <laughs> he is tenderly calling. Would you surrender your life to him? Yes. Jesus Christ is tenderly calling. Would you surrender your life to him? Yes. Would you surrender your life to him? In a moment, I'm going to invite every one of you to stand onto your feet. And we are going to pray. We'll pray for the city of Greensboro. We'll pray for the state of North Carolina. We'll pray for the nations of the whole world. We will ask God for mercy. We'll stand in the gap for the city. For we have sinned against the Lord. And we ask him to have mercy and forgive us for all our sinful ways. And for him to heal our land. Hallelujah. So supported to eternity so supporting as we live today so support as the days go by how many really will die in Christ how many really will live again so supported to eternity, so supported as we live today, so supported as the days go by. How many really will die in Christ? How many really will live again? Look around you, see the souls of man. It should be God's salvation and the blood of Jesus was shed for them that they might be saved. But do you care for their soul? So supporting, so supporting to eternity.
Lift up your hands before the Lord. Let's pray for the city and the nation of the whole world. Heavenly Father, the word that you gave unto me, I have delivered unto your people. We thank you that you are the creator of heaven and you are the creator of the whole earth. Your eyes run through and through the whole earth, beholding the deeds of men and show yourself strong in the behalf of those who love you and tremble at your word. Tonight, Father, we lift up before you our city, Greensboro, our county, Guilford, our state, North Carolina, our nation, America, and the nations of the whole earth. Behold, Father, behold the advancing pestilence called coronavirus. Tonight, Lord, we confess any and every sin that we have committed against you as a city, every sin that we have committed against you as a county, as a state, as a nation, and as a whole world, we confess our sins. Yes, Lord, we have sinned against you. We have spilled innocent blood. We have wickedly extinguish the life of people so that we'll just have what we want and we take things by violence all these things that we have committed are before you Lord and we are asking tonight that you have mercy upon us and forgive us Lord lay no sin against our church have mercy upon us O oh Lord remember me never when you cry when you spoke against me never that there was an impending destruction that was going to happen within three days. They turned to you, oh my father. And they cried unto you, and you had mercy. And tonight I am praying, Father, in the name of Jesus. As we turn to you as a city, as we turn to you as a county, as we turn to you as a state, as we turn to you as a nation, with fasting and with prayer, and with repentance from our wicked ways, Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. My God, have mercy. And forgive us for all our foolish ways. We have turned your word upside down. That which is abominable is what we exalt. That which is abominable is what we exalt. Father, sin is what we glorify. And Lord, we love sin more than anything. We are asking that you have mercy upon us. Bury us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash us from all unrighteousness, from all unholiness, O oh Lord. Wash us and make us whole. The whole nation of America and the nations of the whole world. I pray that, Lord, many will run, 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 run unto you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ. Many from the four corners of the world looking at what is happening. The fear that has come upon the whole world. May that drive as many, as many, as many from all walks of life that they will lift up their eyes and say, Lord, have mercy. We surrender our lives to you. We yield our lives to you, Lord, have mercy. We confess our sins. We turn from our wicked ways. Lord, have mercy. Father, have mercy. I pray, have mercy, Lord. And as you have mercy upon me, never, so have mercy upon the city of Greensboro. So have mercy upon the county of Guilford. So have mercy upon the state of North Carolina. So have mercy upon the nation of America. So have mercy upon the whole nations of the world. Father, we are your creation. Have mercy. And hold back. Hold back this pestilence. Hold back this pestilence called coronavirus. Hold back in the name of Jesus. Spare the elderly, Lord. Spare the elderly. Spare the elderly. For they are talking about elders being the one of God to contract this. But Lord, spare the elderly. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Every elderly, cover them with the blood, with the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, protect your own. In the face of this pestilence, arise, O oh Lord. Arise, my God. Arise, my God. 
and show yourself glorious and show yourself glorious arise my father in the name of Jesus and everyone that has put their trust in you father don't let them down don't put them to shame deliver let deliverance flow like water into the homes of your people in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you my father we lift up the nurses and the doctors before you all the nurses, all the health work people, those who are in the health, who are the ones are, that are facing this the most. Protect them, shield them, cover them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Cover them and grant them the wisdom that they may be able to come up with that which is going to solve the problem. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Do this for your name's sake. Do this for your glory's sake. My Holy Father, do this for your glory's sake. And yes, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up the politicians before you. I pray for a shaking, that you will shake every one of them and cause them to know that this is not a time to play politics with that which bothers around human life. In the name of Jesus, let them know that this has nothing to do with politics. Shake them. Anyone who seeks to make politics out of this, shake that person. And let them know that you are the living God. You are the living God. Expose every one of them. Expose their hypocrisies. Expose their hypocrisy. That pretend love. Expose it. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, take care of your own. 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 In every nation, take care of your own. Take care of your own. The little children, take care of them, Lord. The sick and the suffering, take care of them. Those whose immune systems are weak, take care of them. Boost their immune system with the blood of Jesus. That they may withstand this pestilence called coronavirus. Called coronavirus, Lord, may they be able to withstand it. Every one of us. Thank you, Father. For you hear us always. And you have heard us even tonight. Be glorified. Be magnified. Yes, Lord, I pray for all the homeless children, people. Those who have no place to lay their heads, I pray for them. You are their shelter. You are their hiding place. Father, cover them, protect them. Against this disease, protect them. Shield them. In the name of Jesus. For yes, Lord, your heart is towards the homeless. And your heart is towards the helpless. Father, protect the homeless. Protect the poor. Protect the downtrodden. Protect them all. Hide them under your wings. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In the name that is above every name. The name that is a strong power. The name that all righteous men run into and they are safe. The name that shields us from all epidemics. That name. That much less name, Jesus Christ, and Him crucified. And the saints of God, we shall all say, Amen. 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 The Lord is good. 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 Hallelujah.
any pestilence. Amen. Don't panic in the face of coronavirus. Amen. The Lord God Almighty is your shield and your God. We will take the necessary precautions. We will not act foolishly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But don't panic. Amen. Don't panic to the extent that you begin to throw away your money. Because you will be needlessly spending your money on things that you ought not to. Because of the commercialization of this thing. Don't panic. Be still and know that I am